Well, that was how our first day ended, with a stunning sunset, clear skies overhead, and the gathering calm of a prairie night. This was the beginning of another sailing camping excursion on Lake Diefenbaker. It was the sequel to a trip that my sailing buddy Daryl and I made in 2013, a trip that we dubbed the Elbow Run. trailered our Windrider trimarans from Saskatoon through flat prairie farmland south and west to take the Riverhurst Ferry across the lake. We launched at Rusty's Cooley Marina in the Palliser Regional Park, near the last location where we had camped the year before. From there we sailed south and west with only a whisper of wind and pitched our camp as the sun was going down. This set up a pattern for subsequent days, early mornings with leisurely breakfasts, followed by long hours of sailing, ending each day later than we had expected. It is a pattern that Daryl and I find easy to relax into. Our goal for each day is the journey and not the destination. Neither of us carry watches, so time is inconsequential. Day two began in the same way that the first one ended, with very little air movement. Just enough breeze to ghost along and know that we were moving, providing us a welcome opportunity to unwind from our sittiness. For Daryl, it was a break from his working life that he had been anticipating for months. I'm retired, and I don't have a job to hold down. I was just happy to reconnect with the naturalness of living free. Day we pulled ashore to stretch our legs and share the morning's bird sightings. Like our last trip on Lake Diefenbaker, we remarked on the number of great beaches for picnics and camping. It really is a treasure trove for those who prefer a natural experience. And once again, we were appreciating our wind riders. They are ideal for this type of camping and sailing. day came to a close when we discovered a beach that quickly became our favorite campsite on the trip. Our tents went up and the steaks were soon on the new portable barbecue that I had bought for the trip. Yes, we enjoy a natural experience, but we also appreciate our modern conveniences. <laughs> On day three, I was up and about as usual early in the morning. The light at that time of day is the best for taking photographs, so I like to get out and see what there is in the surrounding area. I startled a doe in a ravine not far from where our tents were sitting. On my walk back to the campsite, I came across rocks covered with centuries-old lichens of various colors and shades. They are an artistic reminder of how long it has taken to form the surrounding prairie soil and how important it is for us to place much more value on it if we want to leave a positive legacy for our children's children. After enjoying the breakfast that Daryl had prepared, we repacked our gear on board and set out, this time soon welcomed by a brisk breeze that swept us along our way. 
It wasn't too long before we were abreast the community that has formed at Prairie Lake Regional Park on the north banks of the lake, not too far south of the town of Beachy. From there the lake took a bend. The wind picked up substantially and we were soon making good time. Sometime later in the day, we each could see something off in the distance, but we were not sure what it was. It was reminiscent of the previous year's trip when we first spotted Bird Island off in the distance. And just like last year, it wasn't until we were nearly up to it that we could see what it was. Erosion had carved away the lake banks all around that spot, leaving a huge column standing all by itself, looking very much like a watchtower. Without a chance to plan it out, Daryl took the inside passage and I took the outside, playing Windrider Peekaboo. The afternoon wore on, and with it, the wind died until we were back under motor power again, looking for a suitable place to camp for the night. We found a beach strewn with logs and the evidence of grazing cattle, but there was room for our tents. It was late, and we were happy to call it quits for the day. Soon we were fortified with a cold beer and a hot meal. We woke on Thursday to another sunny, bright and very calm morning. We were soon motoring past Beaver Flats. The breeze picked up mid-morning and we were able to give the outboards and our ears a rest.
winds continued on and off in strength during the day until we were alongside the Prairie Lake Regional Park again. We were determined to make it back to our Tuesday campsite. Once again, shadows were starting to form as we pulled on shore for the night. After breakfast on Friday morning, we motored only a short distance before a breeze picked up. We had a lot of lake to cover, but with some of our best winds of the week, we were confident that we could make it all the way back to Palliser Park. I was flying my new Reacher much of the time and learning through trial and error how to tack with it and use it to the best of advantage. That kept me too busy to operate a camera at the same time. Daryl's GoPro had run out of battery on day two. So there are no good shots of the Reacher in action. You will just have to take my word for it. Flying a Reacher on these wind riders can be addictive. When that sail powers up, you better be paying attention. Sometime afternoon, we pulled onto the beach for a break. We could see a weather change on the way, but we had been watching rains moving back and forth across the lake all week. And we were still hopeful that we could outrun it. The sky behind us grew darker. I was maybe half a mile ahead of Daryl, still flying the Reacher, when I heard his voice over the Cobra radio, something about heading for shore. I looked back and could see his mast looking like it was on its way over. Daryl tells us what happened next. Uh, days of just relaxing, serene kind of sailing, all of a sudden within moments, you know, everything just switches so fast. I guess every time you go sailing, you, you learn something. And uh, what I learned most this trip was uh, the respect how fast uh, a storm can move in. Suddenly you look behind you and, oh gosh, it's pretty dark. And man, it's about, I'm going to say half a minute later, and there was full on gusts and white caps. And, uh, so, yeah, that guy's got to be prepared. Well, as you know, like I was, I just got off the radio with you, like probably seconds before, and I, uh, you know, started to put on my life jacket, and the wind was just starting to pick up to the point where it was uh, whipping my life jacket around like some crazy flag or sheet, and it took me quite a while to actually get it on and get it buckled. And it was about that point that uh, there was so much wind that the boat was actually experiencing uh, knockovers, you know, getting completely pushed uh, to, you know, where the mast, on top of the mast is just a few feet above, uh, above the surface of the water. And uh, the tramp is now your sail and um, trying to reef the sail and all those efforts are pretty futile at that point. You just uh, I dived forward and was trying to take care of my dog. I thought we were going over. And uh, it was at that point where I looked up and there was those gentlemen in the boat. So, you know, it was an effort to get a line out and uh, get towed in. And uh, so that's what happened. We got towed in. Uh, my steering cables had broke as well. So luckily I had some perimeter steering hooked up on the boat. I was able to sit in the center cockpit with my dog and uh, hold on to a rope and steer the boat to shore. And uh, the guys were good, they got me up on shore and uh, they, they offered a ride in, at which point I said I'm going to stay with my boat. I put up a tent and got on my, 
my uh, wet clothes and uh, got the dog on some dry blankets and probably waited it out for what seemed a couple hours before I heard Rod motoring back. You know, and the whole time laying in the tent, you know, the wind's going and the lightning's going. It's just kind of, kind of weird. So. And then what? It rumbled off and it was gone. It made us, uh, made us uh, several hours late getting back when it wasn't Friday night, you know, so taking down the boat in the pitch black at two in the morning was interesting as well, but not so bad, you know, everything's a little, uh, you can't plan these things, I guess. As Daryl says, we motored for almost three hours before seeing Rusty's marina in the distance. By this time the sun was on the horizon. Dusk was on us as we made our way onto the lunch slip. It was pitch black as we unstepped masts and prepared boats and trailers for the drive to Saskatoon. Arriving home at 2.30 in the morning. Grateful to be home safe and grateful for another wonderful Lake Diefenbaker sailing experience. Let's hear Daryl talking about the trip. Ah, it's, it's been great. I mean, uh, since I met Rod, you know, I responded uh, years back, he was looking for a wind rider, so I, I simply just said, I have one, but uh, when you get one, let's basically hook up and go sailing. And this is how the Lake Diefenbaker trips kind of stuff. Uh, it's great. I mean, it's great. I never liked going home at the end of a sailing day, so I guess the best part for me is, is at the end of the day is, uh, you know, you sit on the beach and have some campfire food and talk about the day. Uh, the scenery, the topography around Lake Dief Diefenbaker is, is different everywhere you go. Um, and the next morning you do it all over again. You know, it's super. It's a big lake, you know, we've, we've done this trip twice could do it two more times and not cover the whole thing so I'm looking forward to that and uh, more people joining basically it's, it's just it's just a week of serenity it's a week of exciting sailing camping outdoors adventure and all the things I like you know, it's pretty close to heaven as far as uh, you know as a sailor is concerned at least in the prairies, so uh, yeah, kind of pine and wait all winter for this uh, this sort of thing. Well, you heard what he said. We are already planning for the next Lake Diefenbaker experience for the summer of 2015, and once again, we're hoping that we will see some more windriders joining us for the trip. It promises to be a good time. See you then.